Laser sights are an essential firearms training tool, clearly correcting and improving the two most important shooting fundamentals, aiming and trigger control. Crimson Trace, making laser sights standard equipment. Learn more at crimsontrace.com. This is Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, now available on iTunes and other podcast clients and on the free gun dealio smartphone app for iPhone and Android. Feel free to call Tom now at 1-TOM-TALK-GUN or 866-825-5486 or email Tom at GunTalk.com. Now, once again, here's Tom. Now, I tell you, I just love the Olympics. I just love the whole thing. It is so much fun. And the fact that we now have two Americans with medals and shooting, even better. Corey Cogdell just wins uh, bronze in women's trap. And, of course, yesterday, Jenny Thrasher, at 19, wins gold in women's air rifle. Very cool stuff. Uh, Very dedicated people. Focus, focus, focus. I may have shared with you, at one point I was talking to somebody at one of the uh, universities that has a shooting program where they offer scholarships. And there are, in fact, you may not know this, a lot of colleges that have scholarships in shooting. And they said, well, you know, we never have to, we don't offer a full scholarship to anybody in shooting. I said, that seemed not not fair. I said, why is that? I said, oh, we don't don't have to offer shooters full scholarships. You see, all shooters can get an academic scholarship. (laughs) <laughs> Isn't that something? Dedication. I guess it goes across uh, all fronts there. So if you are dedicated to an individual sport like shooting, you also have the ability to concentrate, to plan, to dedicate yourself to your studies and other things. Just neat stuff. Neat stuff. I spent, uh, I mentioned earlier, I spent the week doing the First Person Defender show. Now, of course, uh, Chris Serino is the host slash trainer of that show. So we had a, a hoot with Chris and his wife, Michelle, who are just tons of fun. Chris is a great trainer, as well as being just a, a good friend, and we're just having a ball doing that in the Baton Rouge area. And, of course, you may know Chris from his days at Top Shot. Well, somebody else you may know from the TV show Top Shot is Blake Begaz. Well, Blake joins us right now because he's been up to some other things. Hey, Blake, I appreciate you being with us. Hey, how you doing, Tom? I am great. Uh, yeah, we were kind of over, a little bit closer to your part of the world. Uh, and we were in Baton Rouge. I don't know if you get together with Chris uh, occasionally. Well, I haven't seen him in some time, but I sure would have liked to catch up with you guys. But I spent 19 weeks straight, the longest in Louisiana history, at the Capitol in Baton Rouge. And I, it was good to come home, and I'm uh, looking forward <laughs> to not going back for a little while. I need to spend a little time with the family and the business. Well, we need to explain that uh, you now are a uh, representative in the Louisiana legislature. So, yeah, you spend a lot of time in, in Baton Rouge in the state capital these days. Yes, we, we spend a whole lot of time, like I mentioned earlier, actually the longest in Louisiana history. We have some major budget issues in the state right now. We went into three back-to-back sessions. So we spent from February <sighs> to late June um, at the Capitol, and it sure did put a damper on my shooting season. Um, I'm just getting back, doing a little training back at the house, spending some time with the family. And it's, it's, it feels good to be back on the shooting range. It feels good to be back in my home district. Now, are you shooting competitively these days? Yeah, I guess that's, uh, I'm doing as much as I can. I, it, it, my um, service in, the, in, in public service in the legislature pretty much puts me at the Capitol during the springtime. And the majority of our larger competitions are usually in the fall. So um, my plans are to sort of do politics one half the year and shooting the other half. Although being in the legislature is a full-time part-time job. So we're we're never, we're always Uh doing something for our district. And and probably when you're in the legislature, you feel like you're taking fire at any given time too. Yeah. It's uh, it's good to be well armed there. Um, (laughs) I definitely demand the respect of my colleagues. They all know I'm a world champion shooter. And, uh, you know, we get together um, annually at the state police range there, and we shoot with state police and get qualified. And we've got a good group of guys. We've got a really uh, strong state for pro-gun legislation, and I'm very fortunate to be um, in the Louisiana legislature. Well, along those lines, you have a, a bill in the legislature. What is uh, HB 142? What is this all about? 
Yeah, well, HB 142, we just passed that bill in the regular session in 2016. It actually became effective um, August 1st. It was um, approved by the governor recently. And what it does is basically makes a change to Louisiana's concealed carry law. It says prior, um, if you were a prior convicted felon, you cannot get a Louisiana concealed carry law, the law uh, Louisiana concealed carry permit, excuse me, under no circumstances. Now mm-hmm. we put um, some different um, requirements. If you are a nonviolent prior convicted felon, you've waited 10 years from your sentence, your probation, or your parole, and you've received an expungement, you can now apply and get a Louisiana concealed carry license. So what started the ball rolling on this? What got you wanting to do this? Well, it, it's, it's very interesting. I actually didn't have the intent to change um, Louisiana concealed carry law at this time in this fashion. Mm-hmm. I was actually intending to fix a federal um, gun, a federal issue, a federal interpretation of our state law issue, which dealt with possession and purchase rights. Um, and it just led me on the path of having to change Louisiana concealed carry law in order to get people back their possession and purchase rights. You know, sort of a, um, it's very interesting how I came about with this. In 2014, for some reason, the federal government came in and reinterpreted Louisiana's um, restoration of right gun rights law. Currently on the books in Louisiana, if you wait 10 years um, and you're a nonviolent offender, you can get your gun rights back. It means you can purchase and possess firearms. Well, at some point in 14, um, people that had been buying firearms, these, this, this group of individuals had been buying firearms. They were not rehabilitated, law-abiding citizens, you know, working years um, at jobs, not repeat offenders, really good people. were buying mm-hmm. firearms in 2013. They go to pass a NICS check in 14 and get denied. And they find out that they're criminals again after, being re- after serving their time, and they, do, they no longer have possession and purchase rights. And the reason being is because the Fed said, Louisiana legislature, we don't care what your restoration of rights law says. We're going to look at your most restrictive gun law, which is Louisiana concealed carry. And because Louisiana says that no felon, prior felon, can have a concealed carry license, which means no prior felon can purchase or, or possess a firearm. Uh, how crazy is that? Well, that doesn't make any sense. All it said was that you couldn't carry one, but didn't say you couldn't purchase one. But So you said, okay, the, the way to attack this federal reinterpretation or interpretation of the law was to get this fixed in the Louisiana Concealed Carry, and then that should make the federal argument go away. Now, here's the question. Will it really make it go away? Well, and that's the point that we're, we're at now. It's, you know, we're, what are we, August 7th today? The law just went into effect. Everyone's learned about it. Now, I've done the legislation. I worked very hard. I had bipartisan support. Um, you know, we had a lot of challenges in the legislature to get this thing through. I had to amend the bill many times to make everyone comfortable within the legislature, but we got it through. Mm-hmm. And now it's time for someone to actually test this thing. Um, there's no guarantee. So somebody basically, the they got to go buy a gun. But they just, you got to go try and buy a gun. Well, obviously, you're going to get denied. My, my understanding is you're. If you've been denied prior and you have contacts with the feds, you would call those guys up and see if you can get one of those UP, UPIN numbers um, mm-hmm. and, and go ahead and make them aware of HB 142, which I think may be Act 212 now, um, and let them and, and let the feds actually reinterpret this law. Um, the The positive is that we're not the first state to go through this. Alaska went through this same issue in 2010, and we looked at Alaska and how they fixed their issue and sort of did the same thing in the state of Louisiana. So we're hoping that this actually fixes the law. Now, you know, when you first look at this thing, you're saying, well, who wants to help convicted felons? Well, these guys are a different class of convicted felons. They're not violent. Mm-hmm. They're not sex offenders. They're not domestic abuse cases. And I'll give you some examples. A, constitu- a constituent who called me, 19 years old, peeled out in someone's yard, left a peel out mark that did more than $500 of damage. He got a criminal damage to property felony charge. He's, he's um, 30, 31 years old today. He has a newborn baby on the way, a boy at that. Went to go buy him his first hunting rifle. So, you know, just like in my family, my, my father actually brought me a shotgun to go do some dove hunting. Well, he got turned mm-hmm. down. And that sort of gave me the drive and the passion to uh, help this individual. And then it, a lot of others started coming out of the woodworks. We started seeing people that had made fake IDs uh, when they were 18 in high school and got forgery charges. Never repeat offenders. Some of these individuals that worked for companies like Exxon, major oil companies, for 40 years straight, no problems. Um, really good taxpayers, law-abiding citizens who have been denied their gun rights. I mean, what, what more of a drive to a public servant to fix that than, than those kind of cases? Really? 
Absolutely. Well, Blake, this is wonderful. Um, I'm sure you're going to be following the next step to find out, you know, make sure that we get the feds to understand and acknowledge this. But it kind of goes to a point which I was making just past hour, which is many times the feds don't actually pass a new law. They just issue a new interpretation, which has the weight of law. And here we're saddled with something else. It's just, it's just some of the red tape that we have to cut through. And obviously we know that this, um, you know, th- this presidency, this administration is not the friendliest of gun laws. And I, I'd imagine that has something to do with this interpretation. No doubt. Well, keep us posted if you would, Blake. This is very good. And I'm a firm believer in, look, if you have, you know, served the time, done the penalty, your your penalty is over. There should not be a lifetime ban on owning guns just because you did something in the past. Once you've cleared the initial, uh, then this thing shouldn't linger on. Exactly. People deserve a second chance, and especially those that have gone through, through this extensive vetting process that I've set up. And anyone who's going to go through this whole process and go get an expungement, go in front of a judge, wait 10 years, they deserve to have their gun rights back. And, um, and Tom, there's one thing about the, you know, that I'm always for passing gun legislation that doesn't infringe on law-abiding citizens' Second Amendment gun rights. And, and I'll continue to do that in the state legislature and any, any other position I hold after that. That sounds great, Blake. I appreciate that. I know as, as a competitive shooter, as a gun guy, uh, I am really glad to have you in the legislature. So thank, thank you so much for having me on the show. Thank you guys so much for your support. And I look forward to getting some more range time and passing some more pro-gun laws. <laughs> there you go. Appreciate it. Yeah, send some more rounds down range. Blake Miguez. Yeah, you knew him on Top Shot. You didn't know that he's a state legislature. He is a pro-gun politician. Go with that one. All right, open lines for you now. What is on your mind? Are you watching the Olympics? Have you shared the story? Did you see that incredible interview with uh, Jenny Thrasher and Dan Patrick? I mean, I was about coming out of my chair as I was watching. She was doing such a great job. So what do you think? Shooting in the Olympics? Are you following that? 866-TALK-GUN. XDM 3.8 Compact from Springfield Armory is two guns in one. Use as your concealed carry gun with a compact magazine and use the extended magazine for home defense. Carry 13 rounds of 9mm in the compact magazine and a whopping 19 rounds in the extended magazine. To see the entire family of Springfield Armory XDM pistols, go to SpringfieldArmory.com. That's SpringfieldArmory.com. If you're like me, you don't have money to burn, but you still want to buy guns, ammo, and accessories. That's why we created Gun Dealio. That's a free, yes, a free smartphone app. Just download it and start getting the deals. Could be discounts, offers of free magazines for your gun, or you could be the first to hear about new stuff from gun makers. Here's how it works. With Gun Dealio on your phone, you get alerts when you enter a gun store. Special deals, you know. You don't have to do a thing. It'll do a lot of other cool things, like let you watch gun videos and listen to Gun Talk podcast. Plus, check it anytime for hundreds of deals and offers. Getting more while spending less. Smart, huh? Gun Dealio. Made in America. Gluten free at the App Store and Google Play or gundelio.com. FN handguns bear the DNA of legends of John Browning, the father of modern firearms, of the artisans and craftsmen who brought his genius to life, of the brave souls who defended our freedom on the front lines for the last hundred years, and the brave souls who defend it on the home front today. FN handguns. The DNA of legends in the palm of your hand. Ask for FN, the world's most battle-proven firearms. Bigfoot gun belts made with legendary leather and quality craftsmanship are built to support the full weight of even the heaviest handgun. With a spring steel core embedded between two layers of rich English bridal leather, you'll never deal with a sagging belt ever again. Each gun belt is handmade with the blood, sweat, and beards of dedicated, skilled Pacific Northwest belt makers. Capture your gun belt for as low as $54.88 at BigfootGunBelts.com. I 
Oh, here's one interesting. Let me pull this out here. From uh, the folks at Vista, CCI Ammunition, basically. This is very cool. This is good news. CCI Ammunition ad- adds to its wildly popular handgun shot shell lineup with n- uh, four big loads. Let's see here. Where is that? Oh, don't tell me you don't have the back end of this. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> I need to find what loads they have. Uh, they have new shot shell loads, 9 millimeter. Uh, 38 Special, 44 Special, and 44 Magnum. That's the same one. And 45 Colt. So if you remember back when we could get CCI shot shell loads for a lot of different cartridges, now you can get them again and in some new ones. So 9 millimeter shot shell load, 40, uh, 38 Special, which will, of course, go in a 357 Magnum. A 44 Special, which will also work in a 44 Magnum. And a 45 Colt. Shot shell, why would you want that? Well, snakes, vermin, varmints, balloons, fun stuff at the range, just kind of nice to have that. Um, hmm. The variety of ammo, in many cases, is what makes our guns so much fun and so interesting. So, way to go, CCI. Nicely done. 866-TALK-GUN gets you in here, or just dial one Tom talk Gun. Charlie's on line one out of Amarillo, Texas. Charlie, what's cooking? Hey, uh, I have a quick question for you. I am, mm-hmm. I'm an ex felon. I just got done mm-hmm. listening to your conversation with the Louisiana uh, individual. I'm not a sex offender. I will never hurt a woman or a child. That, that's beyond belief. Now, have they, the federal regulations, have they changed their law, their regulations? Because we have open carry that can I still carry a black powder pistol? Okay, you got, let me, I'm going to address it, but there are several different questions contained in your scenario there. Under federal law, a black powder revolver is not a firearm. And it is my understanding that under federal law, you can own that. State law may differ, and I do not know what the Texas law is on that. So before I would do anything in your situation, I would research this and get a definitive opinion from somebody, not a buddy and not a cop, okay? Somebody who actually, maybe a a prosecutor, a DA, or somebody like that, but I would certainly research it. Maybe even the Texas Rifle and Pistol Association, somebody who can help you out, knows what the state law is. But yes, it is correct that a black powder firearm is not considered a firearm under the federal regulations, federal statutes. I appreciate the call, Charlie. Let's see here. Uh, line two, Tony's got a range report for us out of Nevada. Hey, Tony, you're on. Hi there. I've been listening to you about 2000 when I started. And back in those days, you told us that ammunition was going to go up and that we should try to get our hands on buying some at a good price. Mm-hmm. And I picked up lots of twenty two and lots of 9s and 40s and 45s because I shot USPSA, and it really made a difference. And on this Monday, well, good deal. I, uh, I should say this last Monday, I took my lovely mm-hmm. wife of uh, 42 years, and we took her to the range. And we shot a, I'm a little nervous. I'm trying to... Keep my clothes right here. Uh, You're we doing great. M2. My wife says I'm great. At, I'm a great talker, but boy, I'm nervous now. <laughs> <I shot laughs> hey, relax. You know what? This, this this is just gun guys talking. Don't worry about it. We're just yakking about guns now. It's all it's all good, Tony. Sounds good. I sh- we shot an M2, uh, MP5, and a fully auto AR15 with a suppressor. I have a friend. Yeah. That has the license to build those and had all his federal, all his licenses and everything, and his um, mm-hmm. all the permits and everything you need to have. But he can't keep them in California, and we right. have moved from California. Matter of fact, here I go again. I think it was your sister you said that lives in California, and we moved a year and a half ago. We left Modesto, California, and moved over here to Dayton, in Nevada. Mm-hmm. And what a difference! Mm-hmm. The people over here are just, oh yeah, they like their guns. Yeah, my sister was in the Pescadera area just south of San Francisco and finally realized that after, I don't know, four or five years and $100,000 spent just on the prelims, 
that the authorities there, the California Coastal Commission, was never, ever, ever going to let her add on to her house. Uh, I mean, she, she had spent $100,000, and they had not turned the first spade of dirt on work. And she finally realized what I've been telling her a year. So they're not going to let you. They're just going to keep dragging this on. So she figured it out, and she left the state also. Well, good on you for doing that. Now, let me let me ask you a question. Um what, what, Tony, where are you shooting this stuff? Is this like a commercial operation? Oh, no, 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 no. This is just a man that, that makes them. Uh, okay. We're the okay. local police department, and we shoot them at the Carson Range. And he was real nice. shocked because he lives in California. And I told him, bring your paperwork with you in case anybody comes up to us and asks us for any information. We have all the paperwork. And when we were mm-hmm. all done shooting, he said, something's wrong. No one came up and asked me anything about it. I said, it's normal, normal over here. <laughs> And nobody bothered us, and it was really we had a, we had a great great time. Uh, my wife really enjoyed the uh, MP5. Uh, she shot the N2. The fully auto AR15, the suppressor, was kind of heavy. Uh, we're mm-hmm. retired now, and not 20 years old anymore. So right. uh, we it was a little heavy for her to hold up. Um, but she did, she shot them all and she just had a great time. That is great. Well, way to go. That That is a great range report. I'm glad you're having fun and I'm glad that you have figured out, um, the value of the move. And I hate to say that. I hate to tell people that give up on California on the one hand, like, thank you for the call. On the one hand, you say, okay, I want to stay and fight. On the other hand, if I stay and fight, but I won't comply, I do become a felon and the whole Will not I will not comply movement has moved from Massachusetts all the way over to California now with gun owners saying, no, I will not do this. I will become a felon. Well, that's not a good choice. Yeah, and the California Chamber of Commerce, you know, got some strong words for you. You want to uh, keep people from lo- leaving the state? Quit making criminals out of good people. They will not stay there. They're good. They want to obey the law. They don't want to break the law. And if they have to call U-Haul or Mayflower to leave the state so that they can continue to be law-abiding gun owners, they will do that. They are doing that. Want your opinion to make a difference? Log on to our website and take the Gun Talk poll, www.guntalk.com. Now, once again, opinion page regular contributor for the Washington Times, here's Tom. All right, all right, all right. Tom Gresham here. It's Gun Talk. We're having some fun today because we're talking about guns and ammo. And just got an email from a guy that says, can't find any 22 rimfire ammo in Georgia. What's going on? Is it that way everywhere? Yeah, it's that way everywhere, but there is 22 ammo available. You just, now, if your local store doesn't have it, go to another store. Go to a big box store. Go to a local gun store. If you can't find it anywhere, go online. 22 ammo is crazy expensive compared to what it used to be. I don't think it's ever going to go back. Just what it is. Unless somebody builds a huge plant, spends 30 or $40 million dollars to make 22 ammo. I don't know if that's going to happen, but you can find 22 ammo uh, if you can't find it locally. And I would encourage you, please, please, to shop locally. Help your gun stores, not the Walmarts of the world. Because Walmart will sell us out in a heartbeat. The moment it's they make more money off of paint or something, the floor space that's devoted to guns will go away. Your gun store, however, will be there. But only if you shop there now. People, I just got an email. I got I actually got an email. I just posted on Twitter, on my Twitter feed. He says, uh, I just did something for the Second Amendment. I paid $10 more to buy something at the local gun store than I would have at a big box store. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. That way the store is going to be there when the others are gone. When the, the outfit that sells paint and curtains and refrigerators decides it doesn't want to carry guns anymore, if you have been buying from a gun store, there will still be a gun store around you. Huh, how about that? 
Yeah, so you can find 22 ammo. You just got to poke around and look for it. Let's see. Matthew's on line three out of Gaston, South Carolina. You are looking for what, Matthew? Uh, I'm looking for an AR-10, okay? An AR-10, okay. Yeah, 30 cal. Um, I've narrowed it down to two of them. I'm either going to okay. go with Ruger's option or Sig's option, okay? And I'm torn between the two, and I literally can only get one. Okay. I well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I know, but most people are not going to buy two 308 caliber ARs. No. Uh, you've picked two good ones. Mm-hmm. I think you are pretty close to the point where. Here's the thing. First of all, let me ask you: Are you going to hunt with it? Is it just for the range? What are we talking about? What's the intended use? About fifty-fifty. Okay. I'm just now, maybe hunting, going, maybe range. Getting into the hunting deal. But mm-hmm. I also have a range membership for a gun range that's two miles from the house. Okay. So. Uh, I I'm I'm on the the Sig website and right now, and I think they may have not updated their website because I'm looking at their 716 rifle, and they're still showing it at nine pounds, which is what it used to be. But I think they've taken about two pounds off of it with a redesign. But I don't think it shows that way. So I would say look at the weight, but we got to find you a, a current listing for that because I'm pretty sure the SIG has come down considerably in weight. I have the, the heavier one, and it's great for a range gun, but, boy, that would be a lot to carry around. Uh, beyond that, you are kind of in the world of, gee, which one do I like best? Do I, uh, do I prefer SIG? Do I prefer Ruger as a brand? Do I the do either of them have a model that particularly speaks to me, a flat dark earth or a set of sights or something like that? Because you're in the very fortunate position of not being able to make a bad decision. Because once you have said, I'm going to get a Ruger or a SIG, then there are no bad decisions. There's just personal preference at this point. Wait, are you leaning toward one or the other? Well, I, I felt the Ruger one. Okay, but the local gun store that I go to, which claims to have a whole pallet of 22 long rifle in the back, and will willingly sell it to you, um, only has the heavier SIG one, I think. Okay. Not their newer one that they just came out with. Right. And that would be the one I would recommend. I would hold off and get the newer one, the lighter one, because... The heavy one, it's it's a heavy beast. Now, if you're going to be doing long-range shooting with it, it would be wonderful because it would help tame the recoil of the 308, which is not massive, but there's some there. If you're going to be doing some long-range shooting, it would be great. But if you're going to carry it, you're going to be hunting, I'd want the lighter one. So, I mean, you're at the point now where I'm not going to be able to help. If you were saying, you know, I want to buy a, an off-brand one, that would be one thing. But you've narrowed it down to two good, well-known brands. I don't think you can screw this one up, man. That's where I thought I was at. Okay. Yeah. Now you got the hard part, <laughs> Matthew. You got to do this on your own now, man. I wish you luck. Look, I appreciate you calling. Mark's in Abilene, line four. Hey, Mark, what'd you buy? I bought my first semi-automatic pistol. I'm okay. a revolver man from way back, and... All of my revolvers have got the movable rear sight. Okay, adjustable rear and sight, yeah. the Ruger automatic, semi-automatic that I bought, um, mm-hmm. it's got one set screw in the center. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering if, if that side is adjustable at all, or... Well, uh, maybe, well, first of all, what model pistol did you buy? I'm in my pickup. I cannot give you the exact... It's a 9 millimeter stainless steel. Okay. Uh, it's the gun that I carry. Um, is it new? Did you buy it new? Yes. All uh, right, it's probably the SR or SR nine. Let me let me ask you a question. Um, why do you want to adjust the sight? What's going on? Um, it shoots 
low and right. Do you shoot? Now, the are you low lefty? I can fix. Are Are you a lefty? I'm sorry. Do you shoot left-handed? Uh, no, right-handed. Okay. Uh, low and right. Um, are you shooting it from a bench to check it out, or are you shooting it offhand? No, this was in my um, my gun range, or the club that I belong to. And to make sure, you know, I was kneeling down and resting the gun, you know, on the table. And... Okay. All right, here's here's the deal. Here, let me let me let me explain this because I'm going to be short on time. Uh, that is a set screw. You can loosen it. and You can move the rear sight left and right. More than likely, I'm just the the problem is I don't know really what gun you have. I mean, Ruger makes a lot of different guns. I'm not sure which one you have. Um, but if it's not an adjustable sight, it may be either drift adjustable or something. But uh, without knowing more about it, I don't know how to you know how to help you, you probably should, I would ask you to do this. Have somebody else shoot the gun first, maybe an instructor or somebody who's a really good shot and see if it shoots to the same point of impact with that person as it does with you because it may turn out that, uh, and I, I don't know how to say this without making it sound ugly, but sometimes a gun shoots really well and just some people, just the way they pull the trigger, it ends up going in a place where they didn't intend for it to go. Um, and having somebody else shoot it a lot of times will go, oh, wow, it actually shoots pretty well here. I wish you luck with it, but, yeah, without more information, there's not much I could do to help you. Hey, when we come back, we're going to talk about a training pistol. We're going to – Howard wants to talk about flashlights. Always happy to talk about that. Actually, I pulled out my tactical flashlight this morning and helped somebody out with it. In the daytime. Do what? Yeah, I'll explain all of that. 866-TALK-GUN. Be right back with more gun talk. As we celebrate two centuries in Remington country, it's humbling to think about all the ground we've covered. Since the infancy of our nation, we've journeyed with you every step of the way, helping shape the course of American history. Remington country is bigger than a place, and for the 200 years, it's been our highest honor supporting your freedoms and your way of life. To celebrate, Remington is giving away 200 guns. For a chance to win, tell us your story at 200sweepstakes.remington.com. Hi, this is Tom Gresham from Gun Talk. America is losing critical wildlife habitat at a rate of one football field every hour. It's happening on the Louisiana coast, but it's critical to all sportsmen and conservationists. These precious wetlands provide winter habitat for more than 10 million ducks and geese annually, waterfowl that migrate north through dozens of states. Don't shrug it off. Get involved. You can help. Visit vanishingparadise.org. Attacks happen every day. How will you react? See real people put into real-life criminal attack situations on First Person Defender. Discover what works and what doesn't. Kidnapping, ATM robbery, home invasion, and other attacks. Learn how to save your life and the lives of your family. Get the entire first season on DVD at ShopGunTalk.com. Get prepared. ShopGunTalk.com. Experts agree that the low-range, variable rifle scope is best for most situations. Now, Trijicon offers a stunning 1-6 to six power variable in the AccuPoint line. Featuring a battery-free illuminated reticle, superior glass clarity, and rugged construction, it's the one scope you need for hunting and competition. Long eye relief, aircraft-grade aluminum housing, manual brightness override. See the 1-6 to six power AccuPoint at Trijicon.com. Trijicon.com. If you're a gunsmith, or if you have a friend who's a gunsmith, uh, no doubt you have heard about the new interpretation, the executive order from Barack Obama's White House that says 
Gunsmiths are not actually gunsmiths. Gunsmiths are gun manufacturers, and they, they should have to get a manufacturer's license. So if you stipple the grip or you thread a barrel or you put in a choke tube, install that in, you know, thread the barrel there, or if you rechamber a gun, you're a gun manufacturer now. $2,250 a year is what it's going to cost you now. A lot of people are saying, I'm just getting out of it. I'm not going to do that. Gunsmiths say, I'm done. Everybody come pick up your guns, closing the doors. Don't. Don't do that yet. The National Shooting Sports Foundation is on it. They are working on this. And their advice to gunsmiths is ignore it. Don't register. Don't sweat it. Don't do anything. We've got this. Let them work on this, okay? Don't panic. But I also offer this as a reminder, because I've heard so many people over so many elections say, well, don't worry about it because the president can't do anything about guns because he or she would have to have Congress vote on a new law. <laughs> Silly person. The executive order trumps it all. The executive order becomes law the moment it is writ. An interpretation or a reinterpretation becomes law. Massachusetts, the Attorney General just says, you know, I know we've been selling these, you know, you guys have been selling these guns and buying these guns and owning these guns and registering these guns legally for 20 years now or so. But as of tomorrow, they'll be illegal and you can't sell them anymore. We're not going to pass a new law. I'm just going to reinterpret the law. And that's what she did. Again, it's being challenged. Don't panic. But at the same time, understand, that's the power of the executive. That's the power of the White House. That's the power of a Hillary Clinton, I want to ban guns administration. And for those of you who get on your high horse and go, I'm going to vote my conscience. You're going to vote her into office. Mm. Line one, Dennis, California. Hey, Dennis, Range Report, talk to me. Hi, Tom. Amen on what you were just saying. Anyway, Range Report, right from my living room. Um, so ammo is expensive. 22 ammo, can't find it. I got what's called a CERT training pistol. That's spelled S-I-R-T, shot indicating right. resetting trigger. It's got and the two different lasers it, in it, right? It's basically, yeah, it's a laser gun, but it's, yeah. It's weighted like a Glock 17 slash 22, same weight. The trigger feels like a Glock 17 trigger. Uh, this has got a magazine that comes out that's weighted like a full magazine. And uh, I've just been super happy with it because you can train with it in your garage. You can, I even go, when I go to the range, I'll warm up with the CERT pistol and then I'll get, go live fire at the range, you know, with my gun. So mm-hmm. um, I, I've been super happy with it. There are several models. Uh, they cost about 200 bucks and up. So the $200 mm-hmm. one, I've been – and by the way, I didn't mention, there's two lasers on it. One laser is what they call a, a take-up laser, or you could call it when you're prepping the trigger. You know, when you might have, right. when you have your finger on the trigger, out on the target, mm-hmm. right at the break point, and it gives you kind of an indication of when you're prepping the trigger. And then, of course, as mm-hmm. you pull through and a shot breaks, then you get a dot of where the – the shot would have broke. And then when well, you go actually, back to reset uh, the trigger, it, you right. can see that laser still on. Go ahead. Exactly. I was just going to say, we used a cert trigger this week on first person defender to show exactly what you're talking about. The take up, you hit the pressure wall and then you press the trigger and it teaches you where the pressure wall is and how to manipulate a trigger. It's a very worthwhile training device. Uh, laser trainers are great tools. Anything, yeah, look, anything that lets you pull the trigger. It's a great tool. And if you can do it without having to spend a lot of money, that's great. Now, what it won't do is teach you to manage recoil. You've got to go shoot guns. You've got to manage recoil. You've got to know how to grip a gun. You've got to know what to do when it's going off. That's a whole different thing. Eventually, you got to go to the range. you got to spend some money. you got to throw some lead down range. And that's the good news.
All right, back with you. Got to try to get through several calls here. Line two, Howard Shreveport. Let's talk flashlights. Go ahead. Flashlights, tactical flashlights. You're correct. I just wondered what you recommend, and I'm pretty sure you must carry one. I carry at least one, sometimes two. I, the one I have in my pocket as I'm speaking to you right now is a Streamlight Pro Tac L1 or 1L. I may have to dig it out and take a look at it. I actually used it today. I was over at the uh, airport, and a guy was having some trouble with his uh, airplane. We pulled up the cowling of his bonanza, and we're looking inside, and the uh, FBO there had given him a crummy little flashlight, and I pulled mine out, and we could see everything we wanted to see. It's called a ProTac 1L by Streamlight. It has one CR123 battery in it. It's got three different settings, bright, strobe, and dim. I When I put on my pants... A flashlight goes into my pocket. I probably use a flashlight 20 times a day. No kidding, 20 times a day. And everybody, everybody I know who has done this, who said, oh, I want to try one of those, start carrying They all later on. They go, I can't believe it. I use this thing all day long. I'm looking in bags. I'm looking behind things. I'm looking under beds. I'm look, you know, I just use it because it's just handy. So that's what I carry is a uh, Streamlight ProTac 1L, available on Amazon and lots of different places. Your your local gun store may have it also. Line 3, Clay, Marshall, Texas. You looking for an AR? Yes, sir, Mr. Grisham. Uh, I'm considering buying one, but I was concerned uh, what you would recommend for the gas system, the gas impingement system or a, sure. a gas uh, uh Let me ask system. you a question. How, how, how often do you think you're going to shoot it? Because that's the real deal. Uh, basically, um, piston in, piston guns, you can shoot longer without cleaning them. That's the real deal. So if, if you're willing to okay. clean your gun after 500 or 1,000 rounds, then a gas direct impingement will work. If uh, you said, no, I want to be able to shoot two, 3,000 rounds without cleaning it, then you might want to be looking at a, uh, a piston gun. Oh, that, that's the... That's the, the that's why what makes it better the the piston because you don't have to clean uh, it as per, much. Okay. Yeah, all pretty right. much. That that's the big benefit there, and you know, but they're all good. You take care of them. Uh, the direct impingement guns are less expensive than piston guns, but I like the piston guns also because they're cleaner. They also have a little bit different feel to them. But if you're getting your first one, you might want to start with a direct impingement. Here's the thing about ARs. And somebody said, they're like tattoos. Once you get one, you want more. Uh, <laughs> when you get an AR, it's only going to be your first one. You're going to want more of them. These are the modern sporting rifles. These are these are today's hunting recreational rifles. And no matter how much Hillary Clinton or the anti-gun people want to brand it as some kind of evil thing, it's just, just a rifle. It's a low-powered rifle. In most configurations, it shoots a 22 caliber bullet. Two, the uh, 223 Remington or 556, same thing. Not a lot of power there. Lots of fun, ergonomic, lightweight, collapsible, adjustable stock, which makes them easy to make them fit people of different statures from uh, a 10 year old to a small woman to a big guy. You can deck them out. They're kind of uh, the Legos or Erector sets. You can you know, take parts off, put parts on. You can make it individual to you it could be a hunting gun yeah it's very shootable it could be a competition gun it could be a self-defense gun it could be a long-range gun it could be just a a thing you take out to the range and shoot stick a suppressor on it it becomes even more comfortable to shoot these are our modern rifles your granddaddy's modern sporting rifle was a bolt action because that's what came out of world war one and world war two now we have these rifles, which have come out of the most modern wars. That's generally how we get our recreational rifles. It's the ones that the military popularized. We have millions of people coming out of the military right now. These are the rifles they know. So when they want to go and buy a rifle, they're going to buy a modern sporting rifle. Yeah, we call it an AR-15. Hey, when we come back, let's talk to John Lott about his new book. You want to hear this. 